This vlog serves as an educational tool which can help you to learn some basic concepts on different topics that will be covered here. I hope you learn something as you watch this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell button for updates. Before we dive into our discussion, here are the objectives of the lesson. Number 1. Know and define what a computer is. Number 2. Analyze and discuss the four basic operations of a computer system. Number 3. Differentiate the components of a computer system from each other. And lastly, number 4. Enumerate the capabilities and limitations of a computer. Computer. It helps us in our daily lives. Our lives became easier because of it. And it is a game changer in our history. But what really is a computer? It came from the word, compute, which means to calculate. According to Tutorials Point, 2019, it is an electronic device that accepts data from the user, processes it, produces results displays them to the user and stores the results for future usage. Computers are not only limited to PCs, personal computer, desktops and laptops. Computers have entered almost every area of the society. They operate everywhere. They come in so many shapes and sizes that it is sometimes difficult to recognize them. Mobile phones are also considered as computers. Yes, they are indeed classified as computers. Although it doesn't have the same component, computer technologies are integrated to it to offer almost the same functionalities. Here are some examples of computers that we encounter in our daily lives. Washing machine. Automated teller machine. Microwave oven. Telephone. Calculator refrigerator and many more although these appliances doesn't have a keyboard and a mouse these technologies have built-in microcontrollers or microprocessors which can also be found in computers that is responsible to make them work and have similar functions like that of a computer did you know that computer is an abbreviation for common operating machine particularly used for trade education and research let us now tackle the four operations of a computer system. Input Process Storage Output The illustration shown is called the IPO model or the input process output model. This is often used to show how data is being fed to the computer and how it turns those raw facts into and information that users can fully understand. Let us discuss those operation one by one. Input. In this operation, the user will feed data into the computer through some various input devices like the keyboard. As smart as computers are, data always comes from the user. It means that in order for the input stage to happen, human intervention is necessary. Process. After feeding some data, the computer will now process it based on the instructions provided by the user. In this stage, the computer turns human language data into machine codes or binary digits since it is the only language that a computer understands. This operation happens inside the computer which is mainly controlled by the central processing unit or the CPU. It processes data so fast that their speed is measured in MIPS, millions of instructions per second. Storage. After processing, the processed data, which is the information, will now be stored in either the primary or secondary storage for future usage. This operation lets the computer recall previously entered data and store information. Computers would not be as useful if they cannot store anything. Output. Finally, the information will now be presented to the user through some output device. 
The machine language information is now translated to human language so that the user can understand it clearly. After storing, information is fetched back to the computer's CPU and finally goes to some output devices like a monitor, so the user can now see the final details. Data and information are not the same. Data are raw facts, which means that these are only bits of details that hasn't undergone some process to make it more understandable. Information on the other hand are process data. They are organized, structured and presented to make them more meaningful and useful for the user. All these operation is necessary for a computer to process data. Without one of it, the whole operation will be a junk. Again, don't forget. Input. Process. Storage. And output. Together, these makes up the operation of a computer. On this part. We are going to discuss about the components of a computer system. A computer system has three major components namely, hardware, software, and peopleware. Let us discuss them one by one. Hardware. Hardware is the physical and tangible part of a computer. All parts of a computer that you can touch is called hardware and includes the mechanical, electronic and also the peripheral parts, which we insert or plug, on a computer. The hardware components of a computer system has four main parts. Those are the input devices, output devices, storage devices, and the CPU or the central processing unit. Let us dig in deeper to these parts. Input devices. Input devices are used to accept instructions from the user and enter data into the computer. It means that in order for us to feed some data into the computer, we must use an inputting device. These devices accepts user responses such as clicking or typing which will then enter the computer to be processed. Here are some example of input devices. One of the common example of input device is the keyboard. Once the user types something on the keyboard, it will then enter the computer and will be displayed on the screen. Mouse. A mouse accepts user input through clicking. Microphone. When we speak through it, the sound enters the system of a computer. Document Scanner. It scans data printed on a paper by using optical technology which will be converted into digital form to the computer. Webcam. It captures a video image of the object in front of it which will be displayed to the monitor. Always remember, when we say input devices, those devices enters data into the computer by accepting responses from the user. Output Devices. Output devices are used to display the output or result to the user. These hardware components visually conveys text, graphics and video information to the user. Here are some example of output device. Monitor. A monitor is used to display multimedia such as text, graphics and videos to the user. It is the common output device that we encounter in our daily life. Printer. It produces a hard copy of the document we stored in a computer. Speaker. Speakers produces audio output that can be heard by the user. Projector. Violent system. It takes a signal output from a computer and projects an image onto a projector screen. Again, output devices helps display information to the user. Storage devices. Storage devices are used to store data and information for current and future usage. Storage devices are mainly for storing data and information. Like what we have discussed in the four operation of a computer, a computer is useless if it cannot store files. There are two classifications of storage devices. The primary storage. And the secondary storage. A primary storage device is found inside the computer which consists of the memory unit. These are the RAM or the random access memory which stores data temporarily, in which data and information that is stored will be deleted when the computer shuts down, and the ROM or the read-only memory which stores data permanently. This memory is primarily used in the startup process of a computer. The secondary storage on the other hand are storage devices that we insert or plug into the computer system. It can be a floppy disk, hard drive compact disk and the most commonly used flash drives. Again, storage devices helps in storing data and information whether for current or future usage. 
CPU or the central processing unit. The central processing unit also called CPU acts as the brain of the computer. It typically controls all of the computer's operation. The central processing unit contains all the circuitry needed to input, process, store and output data. Without it, programs on the computer will not run. The central processing unit is sometimes called the system unit. But they are completely different from each other. The CPU is a small chip attached to the motherboard of a computer. Like what we have discussed, it controls all the operation of a computer. The system unit on the other hand, is the box-like case that houses all the electrical component of a computer including the motherboard which has the CPU. It is also called tower or chassis. Again, do not forget that the CPU is the one processing all of the operation of a computer. Again, these are the hardware components of a computer system. Input devices. Output devices. Storage devices. And the CPU. Let us now proceed to the next component which is the Software. Software are the intangible parts of a computer which include sets of instructions and programs. Software are programs or set of instructions that enables the computer system to operate effectively. There are three major types of software. These are the Application Software Programming Software and the System Software. Application Software is a type of software that performs a specific task or is used for specific applications. The keyword in understanding this software is the word, specific. Because all application software has a specific task to be done, for example we have Microsoft Word, which is mainly used for creating documents. Microsoft Paint, which is for editing and drawing. Calculator, which is for solving mathematical problems or doing simple calculations. And many more. Just remember the word specific. That is application software. Programming software provides tools to assist a programmer in writing computer programs and creating new software. This type of software is commonly used by programmers or people who write codes to help them create programs, application or a new software that can be used by other people. Here are some example of programming software. Compilers. Compilers translate the whole source code into machine codes before executing the program. Interpreters which translates the source code line by line. Eclipse which is a Java language editor. And many more. Remember, programming software are used to create programs. System software includes the operating system, or what we call the OS, and other computer utilities that enables the computer to function and operate effectively. System software helps in the interaction of the user, hardware and software, intermediating with them so that the computer will function smoothly. One of the most common example of this software is the operating system which we can see when we start up a computer. Windows OS or Mac OS can be an example for this. Without it, computers will not run or start up. Always put in mind that system software helps to make any computer operation run smoothly as possible. Don't forget the three types of software. Application software. Programming software. And system software. The last component of a computer system is the Peopleware. Peopleware or the person using the computer is the most important component of a computer system. The computer will not work if there is no person that would use it and it would be useless if no person will interact with it. That is why Peopleware is the most important component of the computer system. Again, these are the components of a computer system. Hardware. Software. And Peopleware. All of it works together so that we can use our computers effectively and efficiently. Our last topic will be all about the capabilities and limitations of a computer. Here are the capabilities of a computer. First is speed. Computers processes data in millions of instructions per second. Which means that computers can process data very fast. Next is accuracy. Computers can give us accurate or precise results especially in calculations. Third one is storage capacity. A computer has the capacity to hold millions of data. Fourth is multitasking. It means that we can do multiple things at the same time in a computer. And lastly, upgradability. 
computers are upgradable, which means that you can enhance its features like the video graphics and memory capacity. Again, these are the capabilities of a computer. Speed. Accuracy. Storage capacity. Multitasking. And upgradability. Here are the limitations of a computer. It can only do what you tell it to do. It means that computers are human dependent and cannot do something unless a human interacts with it. It cannot generate its own information. Computers rely on human input to produce results. It cannot correct wrong instruction. Computers will not know if we have inputted the wrong or right instructions. That is why. It will give you wrong information if you feed it with the wrong data. If the wrong data is fed, wrong information will be produced. Therefore, we must be observant and thoroughly check what we input in a computer. That is all we need to know about computers. I hope you learned something as we discuss everything. To wrap things up. Computers have been an essential part of the society nowadays. It provides us betterment in our lives. Easy communication, fast research and a lot more benefits have been brought by its creation. The only thing we need to do right now is to use it wisely. Never engage in wrong businesses, use it to do the next right thing.